Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I will be talking about the module, the Himalayas Socio-Biological Aspects, Environment Case Studies under the paper, Ecological Anthropology, Cultural and Biological Dimensions. The learning objective of this modules are number one, to understand the physiographic division of Himalayas, number two, to learn the agroecological zones of Himalayas, number three, is to comprehend the cultural zones of the Himalayas and in the end to explore the prominent communities of Himalayas and their interaction with the environment. Now let us have a general introduction about the Himalayas. A steeper substantial physiographic landform extending sizably above its surrounding regions which usually culminated into peak is referred to as mountain. Mountains are formed through the orogenetic that is mountain building forces of crumpling of continental plates where one plate is thrusted upon the other and through volcanic activities. The youngest fold mountains, the Himalayas are formed primarily as a consequence to folding and faulting which resulted on account of convergence of Asian and European continental plates as shown in figure 1. India is a country of varied geotectonic history and great physiographic divisions. The country has broadly been categorized into the four major physiographic divisions. Number 1, the northern mountains. Number 2 is the Great Plains, number 3 is the Peninsular Uplands and number 4 is the Indian Coast. The northern mountain regions comprise of the Himalayas and its offshoots covering a huge area of about 5 lakh square kilometer. This figure shows the Himalayan orogeny convergence of the Asian and Eurasian plates. Division of the Himalayas need to be understood. Different scholars have put forth different schemes of the division of Himalayas. On the basis of geology and regionalization, there are two divisions of the Himalayas. According to the mountain range, they can be trans Himalayan ranges and there can be Himalayan ranges, which is the main Himalayan mountains and there can be eastern hill that is Purvanchal hills. The trans Himalayas along with the three range of the Himalayas have been formed owing to the collision of Indian plates with the Eurasian plates in four episodic events. The trans Himalayas lie in the northernmost area in the country in state of Jammu and Kashmir and partly in Himachal Pradesh as well as northern extremity of Sikkim which is an extension of the Tibetan plateau around the Himalayas. Some of the prominent trans Himalayan ranges are the Karakoram range, Ladakh range, Janskar range and Kailash range. As according to regional division of the Himalayas, the Himalaya is regionally divided into three broad groups that is Western Himalayas, Central Himalayas and Eastern Himalayas. The Western Himalayas is consisted of two subsections that is Kashmir Himalayas and Himachal Himalayas. Similarly, the Central Himalayas also has two subsection that is Kumaun Himalayas and Nepal Himalayas. And the eastern Himalayan region is subcategorized into the three subsection that is Darjeeling Sikkim Himalayas, Bhutan Himalayas and Arunachal Himalayas. Now let us see the concept of Himalayas versus Himalayas. The word Himalaya is Sanskrit word which means the abode of snow or cold snowy receptacle dwelling. Often the word Himalaya and Himalayas are used interchangeably. Owing to its vast extent, geotectonic diversity and episodic process of formation, the mountain system showcases both homogeneity and appreciable heterogeneity. The mountains are divided into three sections geologically, hence the three sections, the Himalayan range, trans Himalayan range and eastern Himalayans are together referred to as Himalayas, while the Himalaya refer to the only Himalayan range which are considered to be main proper Himalayan mountain. The main Himalayan range consists of the three divisions that is Himadri or inner great Himalayas, lesser Himachal or middle Himalayas 
and outer shivalik or sub himalayas foothills the himadris or the great himalayas are the northernmost section of the main himalayan blocks and in its highest section has an average height of 6000 meters this section of the himalaya serves as the effective barrier for the monsoon wind emanating from the bay of bengal thus serving as the orographic divide the north of the himalayas lies the cold arid landscape of the trans himalayan world while the valleys on the southern slopes of the himadris are verdant green which showcases the distinct socio economic personality than that of the trans himalayan with a steeper slope of the south then north average width of the himalayas is about 150 kilometers this section of the himalayas is most continuous running from the indus gorge near the nanga parvat in the west to the valley of the dihang close to the namcha barwa peak in the east these mountains have a core of granite which is flanked by the metamorphosed sedimentary rocks such as graphite and schists figure 2 shows the himalayas as a orographic barrier some of the prominent peaks of the himadri range of the himalayas are the mount everest in nepal or china border mount kanchanjunga in sikkim and nepal mount nupse in nepal mount amadavan in nepal mount annapurna in nepal mount makalo in nepal mount dholagiri in nepal mount nanda devi in uttarakhand mount rio orjio in himachal pradesh mount chambhadari in bhutan kangto in arunachal pradesh etc mountain passes have always been important anthropologically being the lowest point on the ridge connecting the two valleys these passes traditionally served as the seasonal conduit corridor for peopling in and across the himalayas and connected the valley and pastures of the different ecological zones across different ridge some of the important passes in the himadri range are brazil zozila baraloncha shipkila kalicho thagla nathula jalepia kangia dokla sela bondila and bomia the lesser middle himachal himalayas is the most intricate and rugged section of the himalayas which has an average height of 3700 to 4500 meters and average width of 80 kilometers the lesser himalayas are mainly composed of highly compressed and altered rocks varying in age from algonkian to eocene the northern slope in this section of the himalayas are gentler the important mountain range of this section of the himalayas that is peer panjal range in jammu and kashmir dholadhar range in himachal pradesh nag tiba range in garhwal uttarakhand mahabharata range in nepal masuri range in uttarakhand out of these ranges peer panjal are by far the longest with an extent of about 400 kilometers most of the important hill stations such as the shimla chel rani khet masuri nanital armora darjling etc belong to these mountain range incidentally most of these important hill station have important colonial towns as well banihal pripanjal in jammu and kashmir rohtang buran in himachal pradesh rupinya in uttarakhand are some of the important passes of the middle himalayas these ranges are largely composed of metamorphic and unfossilized sedimentary rocks such as the slate limestone and quartz etc the slopes of these mountains range have traditionally been 
quite significant both ecologically and economically by supporting animal rearing traditionally nomadic communities such as Gaddis in Himachal Pradesh and Jammu and Kashmir, Gujars in Jammu and Kashmir, Pangwals in Himachal Pradesh, Drogpas in Sikkim and Tibet, Brokpas in Jammu and Kashmir and other pastoral communities such as Kinora in Himachal Pradesh, Lanulas in Himachal Pradesh, Jonsa in Uttaranchal, Garwalis in Uttaranchal, Lepchas in Sikkim, Darjeeling, Nepal and Limos in Sikkim and Darjeeling and Nepal, Sherpas in Sikkim and Darjeeling, Bhotias in Sikkim, Darjeeling and Nepal and Tibet, Monpas in Arunachal Pradesh, Naishi in Arunachal Pradesh, Adis in Arunachal Pradesh, Mishmis in Arunachal Pradesh, etc., which relied a great deal on rearing domestic. The grasslands in this section has been known as the Murg in Kashmir, Thatch and Kanda in Himachal Pradesh and Bugyal and Pyre in Uttarakhand. From this photo we can see the Ruang Kanda in Kinnor, Himachal Pradesh. The Shivalik sub Himalayas, foothill, outer Himalayas. This section of the Himalayas prominently extend from the Potwar Basin in the west to the Kosi River in the east. Subsequently, this section of the Himalayas continues eastward in a highly discontinuous fashion. It has an average height of about 900 to 1200 meters above mean sea level with varying degree of the width in the western and eastern section. The width of this mountain range varies between 10 to 50 kilometers. The Shivaliks are the most dissected section of the Himalayas due to the crisscrossing of various Himalayan rivers. The valleys separating these ranges from the middle Himalayas are the zones where Duns in the west and Dwars in the east are located. Examples of such Duns are Udhampur in Jammu region and Kota, Potli, Dehradun and Chukamba etc. in Uttarakhand. Anthropologically, these duns and duars have been significant because of being the transition zone where vibrant social interactions took place between highlanders and the lowland economies. This figure shows the altitudinal gradations and ecological settings of the Himalayas as the varying degrees of the slope and altitude leads to different soil formation and erosion factors including different degree of pressure and temperature. The mountains are known for varying ecological setups over short distances. Social and economical personality of the place depends on the prevailing environmental conditions. Thus, the ecological settings of the Himalayas depends upon the altitudinal gradations, the mountain system which in turn impart its distinct social and economic personality. On the basis of the altitudinal variations and resultant ecological settings, the Himalayas are categorized in six ecological zones. The tropical moist Himalaya zone between 300 to 900 meters above sea level. The second is subtropical humid Himalayan zone between 900 to 1500 meters above the mean sea level. The third one shows the semi-temperate Himalayan zone between 1500 to 2000 meters above the mean sea level. And the fifth one is the alpine snow forest zone between 3000 to 4500 meters above mean sea level and next is the alpine meadows tundra between 4500 to 6000 meters above the mean sea level and the next is arctic that is above 6000 meters above the mean sea level. As this zone largely lies in the permanent snow bound condition, it is beyond agroeconomic zones. Based on these ecological zones, five distinct type of agroeconomic activity zones were categorized, which were associated with the various ethnic groups in the Himalayas and which are number one, 
specialized pastoralist, mixed agro-pastoralism, cereal based farming system, next is shifting agriculture, next is a specialized commercial system. The zone of the specialized pastoralism has been confined largely to the Himalayan highland that is high altitudinal areas of altitude ranging between 3000 to 6000 meter above the mean sea level. Brock Pass, Changos of the Ladakh and Lahulas, Kinnors and Gaddis of Himachal Pradesh along with them the Drog Pass of the Sikkim and Mon Pass of the Arunachal Pradesh have traditionally been under the zone for long. These pastoralists have been herding yaks, sheep, goats along with the horses and the mules as the mainstay of their economy while periodically moving primarily in the trans Himalayan zone. Incidentally, this zone has predominance of the Lamaistic Buddhism and predominance of the Tibetan culture with predominance of mongoloid stock of the people across the entire length of the Himalayas. Mixed agro-pastoralism has been confined to the mid-altitudinal areas which range between 1500 to 3000 meters. This has been a sedentary economic zone where people combined sedentary cultivation along with the animal herding. Larger part of the Himachal Pradesh including the lower Kinnor Kashmir Valley regions and the neighboring areas as Uttaranchal in the western Himalayas and Sikkim and considerable chunk of the Arunachal Pradesh falls under this category where people primarily reared goats and sheep among the smaller domestic animals while cows, buffaloes among the bigger cattle in addition to these people reared the, the photo shows the Himalayan community. Cereal based hill farming has been continued to a zone of low to mid altitudinal areas where wet paddy cultivation has been widespread along with the other cereal crops. Shifting agriculture is a practice of cultivation where fields are tilled temporarily only for a few years owing to declining soil fertility 3 to 5 years on an average. Subsequently, the agricultural fields are abandoned and a new plot is carved out while the previous ones are left to get back to the natural vegetation. Till recent decades, shifting cultivation is prevalent in the low altitudinal regions of the eastern Himalayas and its foothills. Thus, it is used to be the part of the tropical moist Himalayan zones and subtropical humid Himalayan zones. Now let's see this specialized commercial system which has been traditionally confined to the low altitude to the mid altitude areas. It has basically been monoculture practice. These are the best represented by the plantation agriculture and have been largely present in the eastern Himalayan region of Sikkim, Darjeeling and Arunachal Pradesh while only a smaller are the areas from the western Himalayan exhibits this form of agroeconomic zone. The examples of the tea, cinchona and cardamom plantations are the prominent examples of this zone where some of the prominent community residing are the Lepchas, Bhutias, Sherpas, Gurung, Limbus, Rai, Magars, etc. The horticultural mission has extended specialized commercial agriculture to even mid altitudinal and high altitudinal areas. This has happened quite prominently with apple plantation in Kinnor, Champa, Shimla, Lahul and Spiti and Kullu district of the Himachal as well as the smaller tract in Arunachal Pradesh where driving horticulture crops have been apple, oranges and kiwis. The specialized commercial agriculture has not only employed the indigenous communities but has also introduced some of the indigenous communities from the Chota Nagpur plateau. Areas to the tea and cinnamon plantation in the eastern Himalayan regions during the colonial times. 
These tribes are often interchangeably referred to as the T tribes or Adivasis. These are the Santhals, Mundas, Ho, Urounds, etc. tribes. These ethnic groups are largely confined to the low altitudinal areas and foothills of the Himalayas. The peopling of the Himalayas can best be comprehended taking into cultural regions in the consideration. Entire Himalayas can be broadly categorized into the four cultural regions. Number one, the Lemistic Buddhism that is predominant of the Tibetan culture. Number two is the Indic or the Hindu culture. Number three is the transition intermediate zone between Lemistic Buddhism and Hindu culture and last is the Islamic culture. With exception of the Islamic culture, these remaining three cultural zones by and large follows the general scheme of the ecological and altitudinal zonation of the Himalayas. Lemistic culture is predominant largely in the entire extension of the trans Himalayan and in considerable portion of the great Himalayan range more so on its northern slope. This zone lies in high altitudinal areas with the prevalence of the cold arid conditions. The Spithian Ladakhis, Lahulas, Kinoris, in Upper Kinori, Bhotias, Drog Pass, Drug Pass, Brock Pass, Sher Pass, Mon Pass are some of the prominent communities of this cultural zone. The southern slope of the Great Himalayan range as well as the Pir Panjal, Dholadhar, Mahabharat range etc. lying in the high to mid altitudinal zones. This cultural area is basically a transition zone. Kinoras, Lahulas, Pangwal, Gaddis, Tamang, Gurungs etc. communities reside in this cultural zone who exhibit a mix of both Hindu practices and Lemistic Buddhism. Buddhism is evident. This zone can largely be traced in the temperate Himalayan zone. Lastly, the Indic or the Hindu cultural zone is largely predominant from the tropical moist cultural zone to semi-temperate cultural zones up to about 2000 meters in the Himalayan Islamic cultural is rather an exception in terms of the location as it lies beyond the ecological altitudinal profiling of the Himalayas, but in smaller section of the western Himalayas in Jammu and Kashmir. Now let us summarize the module. Owing to the episodic orogeny, the Himalayas has been a mountain system of great altitudinal variations and physiographic diversity. However, rather than being the impenetrable fortress, the Himalayas has always been the zone of the interaction, physiographic, socio-cultural and economic traits. Its progeny from the collision of the Asian and Eurasian plates and subsequent rise made the gateway to Central Asia and beyond. This resulted in the bi-directional movement of the men and material and while imparting it a distinct biocultural identity. High altitudinal areas of the Himalayas have traditionally been less pluralistic with the inclination towards being bi-religious. The two religious groups Buddhism and Hinduism often coexist in the juxtaposed manner as they often trace rather similar identities which have their common roots in the indigenous tradition, dress, food, habits, language and ethnicity etc. Where environment continues to play the deterministic role. Religion command a greater importance in the trans Himalayan and great Himalayan region like the Ladakh, Lanulas and Soiti, Kinnor, North Sikkim and Tawang area of the Arunachal Pradesh where forces of nature play more conspicuous role. Either local deities are trusted to govern the forces of the nature or natural elements are 
revered as the deities. Almost every festival scheduled according to the climatic pattern and every work of the significance is carried with prior blessings of the local deity. No matter how the modern world perceives the belief system of these mountain people, it cannot be contested that religion has been successfully imparting the confidence in people to venture out far and wide for the existence amid the challenging environmental condition. The economic prosperity and integration with the rest of the country has sensed the hold of the local deities to some extent. Nevertheless, Highlander are still remain the deeply religious and more in sync with their immediate ecological settings than the place of the lower altitude. Thank you.